I didn't specify examples here, but I did want to at least talk about what's going on. The instructions here say factor each completely. And there's two things about that phrasing. One is it doesn't tell us a method to use, which means that we have to know or come up with a method that will work. And it also says, it also tells us that we may be able to do more than one step of factoring. Uh, so here's what I mean by that. That greatest common factor thing that we did at the very beginning, we on every single one of these, our first thing should be to check to see if there's a greatest common factor. It will typically just be a number I guess it could be an X as well, but like these three terms do not all divide by the same thing. These two terms don't all divide by the same thing, but these three all divide by what? They all divide by two. So our very first step, because it's gonna make it correct and because it's gonna make the next part easier is to divide all of this by two and rewrite this as 2 times 7b squared plus uh, 38b plus 15. Um, I'm going to go ahead and finish this problem with you because I'm realizing like these are terrible numbers and I do not like them. And if I don't like them, you're not going to like them. So factor each completely means, yes, I've factored this into two things, but this I need to at least check to see if it factors again. I guess it might not but I'm pretty sure it does. I am going to do split the middle term. So I'm going to leave the two hanging out and make sure to bring it back at the end. Um, so I need to do, I said I was going to do split the middle term. I need to do seven times 15, which is 105. I need to say what multiplies to get 105 that adds to get 38. Is it 5 and 21? No. Have I accidentally put a problem on here that does not actually work? Because, you know, oh, that's not, yeah, uh, uh, 35 and 3. There we go. I really, really, really was not sure this was going to be okay. <laughs> Uh, so there you go. I've helped you with what is hopefully the hardest problem on here. So split the middle term, we're going to do factoring by grouping and say, okay, I can take out a 7B and get B plus 5. And on the second two, I can take out a 3 and get B plus 5. So this is B plus 5 times 7B plus 3. But don't forget that 2 that's supposed to be at the beginning. We typically just write the 2 at the beginning because that's where it seems, I mean, that's where it ends up like looking the nicest, I guess, once you're used to it. That's just where we put it. If there's something, if there's a greatest common factor that we take out, we put it at the very beginning and then whatever parentheses we have, we put next. Um, so that's one of the things that's going to happen to us that we need to check for greatest common factor. The other thing is that these are mixed up a little bit so that like some of these are these special patterns from day four. Some of these you might need to use um, one of our ways of doing it where A does not equal one like we did here. And then some of them are actually just going to be straightforward like nine where we just need to split it into two parentheses. So part of this is recognizing when do I use which kind of factoring? And if you're not sure, you know, you can, you know, look at the solutions or you can say, okay, it's got three terms. What about the, the very first number? What does that tell me? Um, but this is just, it's a mix up of all of them so that we can try to identify what we should do where. Thanks. Bye.